Hello, 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 my lovelies. This is PL Fan Edits, and I hope you're all busy and booked and enjoying your life. Today, I'm going to be talking about 11 BL series that I'm currently watching. This includes a list of shows that are recently finished or still ongoing. I'm going to be brutally honest, guys, so please know that these are just my views, and everybody has their own likes and dislikes when it comes to BLs. I also hope that you all are brutally honest in the comment section too, so we can all have a healthy discussion discussion about these shows. So without further ado, let's get started with the first one. Do I wish Foven acted a bit better for his role in Never Let Me Go? Absolutely yes. Am I enjoying the show regardless? Hell yes. In my opinion, Never Let Me Go is a very enjoyable show that is great in terms of cinematography, storyline and execution. Pond and Foven have great chemistry as usual. It's just that Foven and Pond are not on the same level when it comes to acting. Foven is very stiff and his dialogue delivery seems amateur at best. Pert and Chimon are as usual slaying in their roles both in terms of chemistry and acting. There are some minor faults in the storyline like the family is so rich but they only have one middle-aged man protecting everyone. Diao's character is a bit of a narcissist in the beginning who belittles Palm. Even though there is character development, his character still is a tad bit unlikable for me. But overall, I'm enjoying the show and look forward to new episodes every week. Amira Paradox just wrapped up and I'm proud to say that this has been by far my most favorite finished series of 2023. First of all, the chemistry. Oh my god, the chemistry was chemistry. It was dancing, it was galloping. And second of all, Ono's character. It was so endearing that everything he said, every gesture he made was mesmerizing to me. Ono melting Kaburagi's cold and distant heart was everything and more. It had just the right amount of fluff, suspense and spice. Both Ono and Kaburagi were protecting each other in their own way and it was heartwarming to see. The cases they solved together were interesting and I couldn't wait to see the new episodes every week. Kaburagi's jealousy, Ono's evident crush on Kaburagi, Ono's naive yet brave attitude, both characters in the drama were well thought out and intriguing. My only qualm about this drama is that it was so short that we didn't get to see enough dating moments between them. Otherwise, this series was a 10 on 10 for me. A series that is so normal that it becomes extraordinary. Honestly, what is stopping these BL makers to make more dramas like New Employee and Old Fashioned Cupcake? We want to see normal couples do normal things and face normal problems. New Employee is, I would say, the Korean version of Old Fashioned Cupcake. It is realistic, natural and has two grown-ass adult men falling in love and living their life together. This is a no-frill drama that shows a beautiful budding romance between a boss and his subordinate. There is no senseless angst or conflict. The misunderstanding is resolved realistically by communicating like adults. The two leads are good-looking and have amazing chemistry together. The whole premise of the show is very interesting and the pacing is good, leaving no room for filler scenes and keeping it interesting throughout. Another Korean BL that has unfortunately let me down. You might think that I will complain about their fishy kiss, but that's not my main qualm about this series. My main problem is the story and the lead's chemistry. First of all, let's talk about the story. The plot of this show had no depth. There was absolutely no point of making the whole plot so mysterious and not revealing why Vujie was so mad at Yeonwoo. Not knowing what his problem with Yeonwoo was made his personality very tiring and annoying. Yeonwoo on the other hand, he might be Mr. Korea but he had no charm in his personality or acting skills. They were both just reading their script without connecting with their characters or each other. Now the dead fish kiss scene at the end. It wasn't required because their chemistry already looked so forced that no one in their right mind will believe that they are a couple who likes each other. Also the fake rain at the end. It clearly looked like they had opened a big shower hose just for the purpose of filming. I want to talk more shit about this drama because I'm mad but I will do it in my diss video later. 
डोंट आस्क मी हाउ मेनी टाइम्स आई हैव वॉच द फर्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ माई ब्यूटिफुल मैन टू बिकॉज आई वॉच इट ऑलमोस्ट डेली बिफोर स्लीपिंग एट नाइट माई टू फेवरेट बॉयज आर बैक विद अ बैंग एंड आई एब्सोल्यूटली लव द फर्स्ट एपिसोड आई वुड हैव बीन डिसअपॉइंटेड इफ दे डिडेंट कीप हीरा एंड की ओ एस कैरेक्टर्स एज इज बिकॉज दे डायनामिक एंड ऑपोजिट पर्सनैलिटीज इज द होल चार्म ऑफ द शो Now I'm excited to see their relationship grow and their communication improve with each other as they get more comfortable in their relationship. But I absolutely adore how Hira still worships the ground Kyoi walks on and how he is still so clueless about his attractiveness and how much Kyoi loves him. Kyoi is as usual charming and I love how for the world he is a confident idol who portrays a godlike image but when it comes to Hira he is insecure and wants to be the only person in Hira's life. Okay so the warp effect is not a BL but it has a GL and a BL couple and honestly I'm enjoying watching all the couples right now. The premise of the show is quite unique and every couple brings a new flavor of relationship. Each couple has their own problems that they are dealing with and resolving with the help of Alex. The only thing I'm worried about is that Alex and Jean are the main couple of the show and they have barely had any development since the first episode. But that doesn't matter because my main focus are Army and Joe. First of all, oh my god, the chemistry and visuals. They are both killing it in their roles. The kisses are mind blowing and so are the other things they did together that had my jaw dropped and locked on the floor. Also I never knew that the problem Joe faces was actually a thing so I'm glad to be educated by them. Bless my Fujoshi heart cause Koichiro san has never once disappointed me with his direction. Novelist amazing, mood adnugo mind blowing, given stunning. His works are just the perfect blend of suspense, eroticism and drama. When I saw the casting of this drama when it was previously announced, I saw that the character of Masumi is played by Seto Toshiki, who played the part of Kaneda Yuki in Saint by This Can Be Love. I'm not going to lie, I was a bit underwhelmed by that drama. So when I saw him as the main cast here, I was a bit disappointed, thinking that this is going to be a yet another lukewarm drama like that. But boy, was I so wrong. Toshiki did a complete 360 in his role here as Masumi. He was getting rode like nobody's business. Ritsu's character on the other hand brings the right amount of mystery and darkness. I'm so intrigued by the whole story and can't wait to see more. My school president is going great so far. I have nothing bad to say about the show, but I will be honest, it doesn't excite me. The chemistry of Gemini and Fort is great and they are doing a really good job, but I can't connect to their characters. I know I'm in the minority here because majority of the fandom is enjoying the show and ideally I should too. But for me to enjoy a school BL it has to be really extraordinary. Like if you have seen the Japanese show Life Love on the Line, that is a school BL too, but it gradually progresses into them becoming adults and doing other things rather than being in school and doing school related things. Or another example is Takara Kun Amagi Kun. but the focus is on their relationship and not contests or clubs etc i hope nobody is offended by my opinion i will knock you is a sweet little show that deserves more recognition in my opinion i think if the thai screen writers want to make a comedy bl they should take notes from the writers of this bl because in my opinion they nailed the comedy part i found myself chuckling numerous times throughout the episodes nai and thee's relationship was endearing delightful and hilariously awkward i have never seen a character like nai ever portrayed in a bl before a high school don who is still living in the 80s era and who has a narcissistic personality but at the same time is a nice person and has a good heart nai and thee had great chemistry they worked so well together i loved their budding romance and fluffiness and the cuteness of the whole show love 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 it all I'm not gonna lie guys Moonlight Chicken has me in an absolute chokehold right now when i say chokehold earth's chicken cutting hands are literally at my throat grabbing me hard and making me watch the first two episodes again and again where do i start because i know once i start i won't be able to stop talking about this masterpiece be off deserves a freaking raise for churning out one gem after another The setting and cinematography on Moonlight Chicken is stunning. It's like watching a theater show, but the only difference is that you're watching through a screen and not at the actual theater. 
earth makes chemistry is slaying so hard that i'm afraid they are going to top my list of the couple having the best chemistry so far in 2023 the first episode was perfectly paced the coming together of Wen and Jim felt natural. The sex scene was really well shot and I liked how they showed little details that Jim is reluctant to kiss Wen on the lips since it's a one night stand. I love how Wen is openly and boldly flirting with Jim. It is very refreshing to see. I also like that everybody knows about Kaipa's crush on Jim and how it is so obvious to Jim too but he purposely ignores it, keeping Kaipa hooked on him. We also get to see Wen's relationship with his boyfriend Alan and why he seeks someone else and not him. Overall, the show has lived up to the hype and I can't wait to see more. Between Us just wrapped up and I know you guys will hate me for saying this but I did not like it one bit. Only the first two episodes were good but the whole show went downhill for me from there. Wen and team's chemistry fizzles out after a couple of episodes and then the story just drags with little to no progression in the story until the last two episodes. Us as audience haven't got our entire life to just sit and watch them tiptoe around each other's feelings. We can't just watch them go to sleep together and wake up and have breakfast and just not talk about what they are to each other. They do this for all of the episodes except the last two ones and frankly I haven't got time for that dilly dallying in my life. I got things to do. The writing is lazy in this one. I would have preferred for them to resolve their feelings in the first six episodes and focus the rest on building a relationship. The only side couple I was mildly interested in was B and Prince and I wish they got more screen time because their relationship was well rounded and had good progression throughout the series. I genuinely think that Bon and Prem hype is over for me because I did not like them in Even Sun and I did not like them in Between Us. The trauma that team faces was never properly communicated or discussed with Vin and that irks me because he was genuinely trying to help the boy so he deserved to fully understand the reasoning behind team's anxiety. Dean and Farm didn't need to be included in the show because they did nothing in the show except existing. So these were 11 BL dramas that I have been watching right now. I would love to know your opinion on these shows and let me know of any other ones that I should be watching right now. See you next time. Bye.